Okay, this is hopefully going to explain how to make a straight line graph for this level two experiment where you swung this piece of rubber around in circles and for each radius you measured times. You were given formulas, three of them down here. We'll get back to these in a minute. So, first off, here's the data that came from my class. It's their best of data. And all we've done is we've typed in the radius. We've put it in meters using standard units. We measured the time for 10 circles. Almost all of them have three trials. There's one of them that only has one trial. So, first things first, you need the time for one circle because that is what was in this aim right here, the time for one circle. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do it a little strange. We're going to insert, so you right click and you insert, and you type in, we just want the average t of one circle, that's going to be in seconds. So I want to make an average that's equal. Average, bracket, select the three numbers you want, close bracket, equals. And then drag it down. Almost, there you go, drag it all the way down. Now, those are the averages. What I also want is actually to divide this by 10. First time I didn't divide by 10. Now, we can see that if we drag this down, the averages in this column are the averages of these numbers here divided by 10. So those are the things we want to actually be dealing with. Everything has different decimal places. So what we can do, the first column, everything has two decimal places. Everything over here, it would be better to have two decimal places. So you, by formatting cells, clicking on number, and making sure it reads two decimal places, and hitting OK. Now everything has two decimal places. Okay, so, first off, now, now we have our average t and our radius. If we graphed our radius and our average t, we would not get a straight line. We would get a curve. So what we need to do is we need to look back at the equations that were supplied to us. So here, down here, are equations supplied to us. Now there's one here with t squared and r, so that basically says you could square all the t's and use that to graph r against r. Or, here's another one, where we could have the t's, as we have right now, but we have the square root of r. That's the one I'm going to do, okay? So, what that means to our Excel file is we need another column. I'm going to insert another column right here, so let's right click and insert, and this is going to be the square root of your radius and it is going to have a new unit of meters to the power of 0 0.5 because the power of 0 0.5 is a square root. Now the reason I've put these here next to the average t's is because when we make graphs it's easier if the two columns to make the graph are next to each other. But first, equals, there's two ways to do this. You could click on the number, little arrow above the number 6 and 0 0.5, that's the square root and you could do it that way. Or, you could actually do this. If we just go back, you could have said equals SQRT of that number. And it gives you the same thing. So it's totally up to you how you do it. There's two different ways to get a square root. You can say to the, the number to the power of 0 0.5, or you can use the code SQRT after the equal sign. Either way, you probably want to change the number of decimal places to have two similar to the radius. So you right click, you format cells, you go to number, it's already on two, and you hit OK, there we go. Now these are the two things that we want on our graph. The reason why I've put the square root of radius in column B and the average t in column C is because I know that Excel will always put the left hand column in the horizontal axis and the right-hand column on the vertical axis. So if I want those numbers on my graph, you select the numbers, you go to Insert, you go to Scatter Graph, and you click on that one, and there's my graph. Wiggly data. Like I said, this came from a whole class of kids, and we took their best of measurements. So it's not exactly making a good line, but from this experiment, that's probably understandable. Your assessment 
probably going to be a lot straighter line than this. So here we go. First off, to make this better, we don't need this. You can right click and delete. You probably want to make it look better. So you go to layout and you turn your grid lines on. So there's your minor horizontal grid lines and there's your vertical minor grid lines. There you go. It's a much better graph. Now we need to make sure that we label our axes. The horizontal axis, remember, is the left column of data. So that's the square root of radius. Up here we go to axis titles, horizontal, and you type in square root of radius. Now remember the units for this are meters to the power of 0 0.5 because that's a square root. Now for the vertical axis, rotated title, this was the average period or time for one circle. The units for that are in seconds. Now we need a title for our graph, so it's above the chart, there it is, and you just want the average period of bung in circles versus square root of radius. Okay? You can be very descriptive in your title but it follows the pattern of vertical versus horizontal. Okay? And you can actually make it like that. So, what we need here is to actually insert a line of best fit. So, if you select the data, right click, add trend line, it's on linear. That's the one you want, because we've already linearized the data. We've taken the square root of radius, because the formula told us to. You want to display the equation, you hit close, and there's our equation. And drag that up here, you go to the home button, you make the text bigger, you can drag this off to the side, we must replace the Y, we must replace the X. In our case, the vertical axis is the period, so that's capital T. The horizontal axis is the square root of radius, so we need to say R to the power of 0 0.5. That's how you type in a square root in the system. And there we go. That is the merit level graph for the level 2 experiment. When you print it, you go to file, you go to print, you want to make sure it's on landscape orientation like it is right now. The extra bits to actually get a merit involve your conclusion, and for excellence, you can even say what this 0.4687 should have been. Okay? So there's a few ways of getting excellence. You've got to review your notes. But for merit, you need a straight line graph. The reason we have done this graph is because we were given this formula with a square root of r and a t. We could have done the square of t and r instead. But to talk about that gradient, this formula here has all this ugly thing in a square root. The square root of 4 pi squared, little m, on top of big M, times g. That is basically what this 0.4687 should have been. And it's one of the five ways you can get excellence, is you are talking about that from the equation. There you go. Hopefully that makes sense. You will need to review all of the things needed to get achieved and all of the things needed to get merit. But this is a merit-level graph.